Football transfers are wild. Player salaries in football are unbelievable. Like, seriously. Seriously unbelievable. At the beginning of 2023, Statista released a list of the highest salaries in world football. It doesn't matter if this is accurate or not, these figures are crazy. We have all the usual suspects in Cristiano Ronaldo, Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi. Bonus shout out to Andres Iniesta who is still playing, as well as Eden Hazard who is just vibing. I guess? Of course these guys are in the 0.0000000001% and essentially no footballer, present or future will even be able to dream of touching this kind of paper. But it's still enough to make you question why your parents didn't push you harder as a youngster. Me personally, if it weren't for my bad hip, it would have been over for all of you. The outrageous contracts we see flying around, the sensationalism of transfer rumors, players being tapped up and then going on strike, managers being asked passive aggressive questions about the star player in their squad that Real Madrid is after, all of it has been made possible by years and years of ever evolving rules and regulations in the market. However, it would be pretty difficult to find a ruling that had a larger impact than one known as the Bossman ruling. The reason being that this ruling made it possible for football players to run down their contracts and essentially hold clubs at ransom. Great for modern players, yes, yet somehow the man that made a lot of this possible lost everything. His career, his family, his ability to find work. By fighting and campaigning against an unjust system, he led countless to a treasure that he himself has not been able to reap the benefits from. Today, we recount the story of Jean-Marc Bosman, the man who destroyed the transfer market and went bankrupt to make footballers millionaires. Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinashe and welcome back to another Football Iconic video. The impact that this man had on the current state of football seriously cannot be understated. Born in Belgium on the 30th of October 1964, Jean-Marc Bosman was always a talented player. From youth, he rose through all the ranks on his way to becoming pro, even captaining the Belgium national team at youth level. Having an eye for a pass and a combative streak, it's no surprise that he developed as a midfielder. And it's even less of a surprise that he went on to sign for a Belgian heavyweights standard Liège in 1983 the Belgian champions at the time. Bad news though, five years passed and he hadn't exactly made the progress that many might have expected he would. In those five years, he only managed to make 86 appearances, about 17 games per year. We've seen this story play out multiple times before and we'll likely see it play out over and over again in the future. Perhaps the best option for a player that finds himself in this situation is to seek a move elsewhere and hope that the change of scenery helps revitalize their career. This did not happen for our man, unfortunately. In fact, quite the opposite. In 1988, he moved over to RFC Liège in hopes of a fresh start. But after two years, three appearances, and apparently a fair share of squabbles with the bosses, it's fair to say that this wasn't the fresh start he was looking for. Not a big deal, I guess. He was only 25 at this point, you know, more than enough time to turn things around is what he was probably thinking. All the same, this was a turning point, a point that would drastically alter the power that players and clubs have within the transfer market. Also, a point that would change Bossman's life forever. In 1990, as Bosman's contract with RFC Liège was reaching its final stages, a lifeline for his career appeared in the form of French second division side Dunkerque. Liège was seemingly on board with this proposition at the start. Offload a player that's been deemed surplus to requirements and get a chunk of change for their trouble? Except that is exactly where the problem began. This is pretty much a foreign concept in today's day and age, but before this entire situation played out, player contracts were positioned to heavily favor clubs over players. So if a player's contract had ran out and they wanted to switch teams, they were essentially fully at the mercy of the selling club. Even if a player's contract had completely ran out, a transfer fee would still need to be paid in order to enlist the services of the player in question. The rationale behind this was that clubs provided infrastructure, physical and mental training and other significant investments into the player. Therefore, they deserved adequate compensation. If the selling club wanted to keep them, they would offer them a new contract. However, if the player refused the contract and no agreement could be made, the club was, according to the rules, able to suspend said player. At least, that's how it was in Belgium. Surprise, surprise, this is exactly what happened to Bosman. RFC Liège demanded a massive fee for the guy. 
Some sources say £250,000, other sources say £500,000. Regardless of what it was, it was kind of ridiculous and unfounded. Donkerk were not so keen after that, and instead, Liège offered him a new contract worth £500 per month. He was previously making £2,000 per month. In the words of Bossman himself, I was at the end of my contract with Liège. They offered me a new contract worth four times less than the previous one. And to sell me to Dunkerque, they were demanding four times the price at which they bought me. In other words, they thought that I had become four times better if I wanted to leave and four times worse if I wanted to sign again for them. I don't know about you guys, but the math just ain't adding up on this one. He took Liège, the Belgian FA and UEFA to court and thus a five-year legal battle ensued. He equated RFC Liège's refusal to let him leave, yet still sideline him and even dock his pay to be a major violation of his rights. Not only as a player, but as someone originating from a European Union country. Good news, the European Court of Justice felt the same and ruled in his favour. Bad news. And and I guess also good news, nothing was the same after that. It really is hard to put into words how significant of a ruling this was. After the Bosman ruling, players were allowed to run down their contracts and move on without a transfer fee needing to be paid. Another important factor to come out of this case was the removal of restrictions on the number of European Union players that a club can sign and field in European competitions. A good example of the significance of that ruling was that in 1995, Manchester United played Barcelona in the UCL group stages. Because the number of foreign players, i.e. non-English players and non-homegrown players they could field was restricted to three, Sir Alex Ferguson was forced to field English keeper Gary Walsh instead of perhaps United's best ever keeper Peter Schmeichel. United lost by four goals to nil. Four years later, post bossman Manchester United won the Champions League. Only five of the 13 players that featured for United vs Bayern in the final were of English descent. Of course, we also have teams like Chelsea and Arsenal who both famously fielded teams without a single player of British descent shortly after the ruling. However, undoubtedly the biggest change that this ruling ushered in was the shift in power between clubs and players. Before, clubs only negotiated with other clubs. Now, they negotiate with players, agents, lawyers, and every other middleman you can think of. The guy who delivered your Uber Eats the other day? He got a cut of Mbappe's deal. I swear. What? What was that? You, you want a source? No, no, no. Tr trust me, bro. Trust me. In the wise words of Harry Redknapp, if you are in the last year of your contract, you are not going to move if you've got any sense. You can wait, become a free agent, and then your agent will say you wanted to pay £10 million for him, give him £5 million, and you've got him at half price. Just like that, the game turned from who could produce the best talent to who could afford the best talent and offer the highest pay package. Don't get me wrong, historically, the richest teams have always performed well. Like I said, transfers for the right price did exist well before Bossman, but this effectively turned the millionaire's game into the billionaire's game almost overnight. Teams know they can't veto out of contract moves anymore. They also know that they can't match the financial might of several other clubs. So many will actively seek large fees for their players when their contracts are dwindling so they don't have to let them go for free. In those cases, these are not necessarily Bossman free transfers, but the influences pretty easy to see. One of the most famously referenced and immediate examples of the Bosman ruling's influence was that of Louis van Gaal's Ajax, an absolutely phenomenal team that deserves their own video, really. Winners of the 1995 Champions League with an average team age of 24, which I believe is the youngest average squad age of any UCL winner in a final. But, I can't lie, I was too lazy to check. In any case, over the next few years, just about the entire squad was ripped apart as players moved on to mostly Barcelona and AC Milan, many of whom did so on free transfers. And since then, teams like Ajax have become feeder clubs to teams that can afford to lure their best players away. Same goes for the likes of Benfica, Borussia Dortmund, etc. And if we're all being honest, the pool of teams in world football that hold the majority of the spending power is limited to what, like 10, 15 teams? PSG, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Bayern Munich. Uh, Newcastle now. There are a couple more, but not very many more, if you catch my drift. And just so we're all on the same page, teams like Borussia Dortmund, Ajax, Benfica, 
They raid all of South America, Africa, Asia, and etc. because of their superiority and spending power over the teams in those regions. So they're definitely a part of it too. While there is always a bigger fish, there is also always a smaller one. So what can we say about the Bossman ruling? Overall, a net positive, right? Bar certain bad actors and unprofessionalism, giving negotiating power to those responsible for putting on the show can only be a good thing, I guess. Anyway, let's take this back to the genesis of this entire situation. You'd expect Mr. Jean-Marc Bosman to be universally loved, applauded, and recognized by players across the globe. They owe him everything. He fought for everyone at great personal cost, after all. I started the case at 26, which is at the prime of a footballer's career. It was difficult for one man to carry all of that on his shoulders, even if I did have the support of Thief Pro. I would have preferred if another guy had done it in my place. It was a sacrifice I made. All true. So what did he get in return for this? Blacklisted by the Belgian FA, UEFA and FIFA for meddling with their lopsided system, unable to find meaningful work as a footballer, effectively destroying his playing career, receiving a court mandated compensation that was pretty much eaten up by legal expenses, selling off all of his assets just to stay afloat, relying on welfare checks and donations, suffering from alcoholism, depression and battling for custody of his children. Speaking in 2015 to DW, he once said that following an international match between Belgium and the Netherlands in 1998, the Dutch national team all donated their match bonuses to him, but the Belgian team, advised by the Belgian FA, didn't even speak to him. I wonder why. They even went as far as to advise the Dutch against helping him out. It's ironic that Belgium has produced so many talented globally recognized players over the years and that almost all of these players have benefited immensely from Bosman's actions. I mean, the team is frequently ranked number one in FIFA's rankings and I put a lot of that down to the fact that these players have been able to move freely around Europe, receiving the best training, the best treatment, and the best money. All of these Belgian players who went to England, they are earning 300,000 euros per week, while in my case, I'm not earning anything. It's a tragic tale, one that seems unjust. Yet while Bosman himself has failed to reap the rewards of his own labor and seemingly from the outside looking in doesn't get anywhere near the credit he deserves from the industry that he helped profusely, he acknowledges that he did a good thing. They say the Bosman case was the legal case of the century in sport. It was important, even if I didn't get a lot of recognition. No players have contacted me to say thank you. It is difficult to explain to young footballers what the case means. It's a shame that he's been treated this way. It really is. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about the Bossman ruling and the man himself. Feel free to follow all the socials if you want. All the links are in the description. That's all for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers and I will catch you in the next one.